Oh snap, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the second episode of WoW Time, where we improve at World of Warcraft. Today's topic, the sneaky, stealthy, subtlety rogue, and I have butter knives because I wanted cool props, but I didn't have any, so instead I went with butter knives. I could have got steak knives, but then someone could have got hurt. And I don't have workman's comp, so I wasn't about to do that. But before we jump in to today's episode, I just want to point out that this episode is actually taking place on a Saturday. Most episodes will take place on Friday as normal. However, my blue Yeti unfortunately stopped working, so instead I went and I ordered a brand new microphone, who un which unfortunately couldn't show up until today. But here it is, it sounds absolutely fantastic, and we're ready to shoot the show. You know, what more could I ask for? So, let's hop right into the first question that I always have when it comes to WoW time. What is our fantasy and our role in World of Warcraft as a subtlety rogue? To be honest, this was a difficult question for me to answer. At first, I thought of their burst damage and how they can pop on somebody and stab them, get their health really low, and potentially secure the kill. Then I started to think about, well, a key point of that is the stuns. So, should our role be popping on someone, stunning them, and killing them? That doesn't sound quite right. Would it be just bursting or just stunning? That doesn't quite sound right either. But... What I concluded on is we are the disruptor of World of Warcraft. That is right. Every time we see someone, specifically in a battleground setting, doing something that they're supposed to be doing that's an enemy, we need to stop them. Is there a healer healing? We need to kick them. Is there a warlock spreading his dots? We need to stun them. Is our allies in trouble? Well, we can stun them too because we have stuns galore and tons of burst damage. And something I'd like to hit on really quick, which let's go ahead and hop into the game so you don't have to stare just at my beautiful face, is you can actually use damage to disrupt someone. When someone sees that they're taking a massive amount of damage, they're going to want the damage to stop, especially if it's a significant amount. And that is where we're going to use our burst, which brings us to the first thing we're going to talk about, is how do we burst a target? Well, if you look at my hotbar, you'll see that just like on my Warlock, I have simplified the hotbar as much as I possibly can. Right now, I do not have any stuns present because we are going to add those later. Let's go ahead and talk about the spells I do have, though. Obviously, we have the staple Stealth. It conceals you in the shadows until it cancels, allowing you to stalk enemies without being seen. Attacks from Stealth for the for the and for 5 seconds after deal 10% more damage. So, we want to make sure we're in stealth and popping on people as much as possible. Then we have Backstab. Stab the target, causing 126,000 physical damage. Damage increased by 20% when you're standing behind the target. And it awards us a combo point. So, what we learned from Backstab is, we're going to want to be behind the target as much as possible. And it builds up combo points, which is fantastic. But, what do we use the combo points on? Well, the first thing we're going to use it on is Nightblade. It's a finishing move that infects the target with shadow energy, dealing shadow damage over time and causing attacks against the target to reduce movement speed by 50%. It lasts longer depending on how many combo points you currently have. So, what we'll want to do as many combos, combo points as possible before using Nightblade. It'll last longer, it'll deal more damage, and the last effect, which I forgot to read here, is you deal 15% increased damage to enemies afflicted by your Nightblade. So, we need to get Nightblade on as soon as possible, so that way we are doing more damage. And when we use our next combo point, um, uh, what am I going to, what do I want to call that? The next thing we're going to shove our combo points into, it'll do even more damage. And speaking of that, let's move on over to it. Eviscerate. A finishing move that disembowels the target causing damage per combo point and the damage gets much more significant depending on how many points we have. As you can see, one point we're doing a measly 82,000, whereas five points we're doing up to 410,000 damage. So let's go ahead and see what this looks like on the dummy. So 
we are not actually going to start stealth what we're going to do is we're going to start out of stealth because in battlegrounds there are going to be situations where you are not going to be able to attack the target in stealth now i am going to go over attacking someone from stealth because that is one of the staples of rogue but we're going to start very basic we're not even going to use stealth we're just going to use our backstab we're going to use our uh, knight's blade what is that knight's blade or nightshade i forget already knight blade there we go we're going to use backstab knight blade and eviscerate so one thing I want to show you before we get too far into this is we actually get combo points simply by doing damage. I'm going to right click on the Raiders training dummy here and take a look at these dots underneath my health bar. As you can see, we're slowly building combo points and I'm not using any abilities. So now I'm going to go ahead and stop attacking. That's not super vital, but I thought it was important that you should know that if you're ever getting extra combo points, that's probably where it's from. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go up to the Ra uh, Raiders training dummy and we're going to stand on this rope because we're in the rogue class hall and Blizzard put the training dummies up against walls. So you know it looks awkward when you get behind them in the rogue class hall. And what we're going to do as soon as this last combo point disappears is we're going to start backstabbing him. We're behind him to do that additional damage and uh, we're going to get some, some more combo points from simply just attacking. So we're going to build up two five combo points by hitting backstab every chance we get. We have five as you can see, so we'll use Knight's Blade. And now that Knight's Blade is on him, we're going to build up the five one more time. But instead of Knight's Blade, since it's already on the target, we're going to use Eviscerate and do massive damage. We'll do Eviscerate one more time. Look how much damage this Eviscerate does. Boom! Almost a million damage with that knight's blade on there and five combo points it's an absolute it, it hits like a truck it's amazing however i have one more ability down here and i saved this one for last because this is your artifact weapon ability uh in my first guide with the warlock i actually didn't bring up the artifact weapon because it had a little bit more finesse to it However, with our subtlety rogue, I feel it's a lot more important that we use it and know how to use it. So, if we head back over to the game, you'll see it's called Gormaw's Bite. It lashes out at the target, inflicting 304,000 shadow damage and reducing movement speed by 60%. And it grants 30 energy over 6 seconds, and it awards 3 combo points! You can see why I thought it was very vital that I would use this. We get more energy back, which means using spells more often. It gives us three combo points, and it hits like a freaking truck. So it's very important that we throw in the Gormal's Bite. But when? Well, I think there's a little bit of preferential um, choice here. However, I'm going to show you when I use it. We're going to go through the entire rotation that I did previously. However, at the end, when we're low on energy and we're out of combo points after the second Eviscerate, that's when we're going to throw out the Gormal's Bite, because we're going to be low on everything, and the Gormal's Bite is going to bring us back to full. So, we're going to start by backstabbing a whole bunch to get those five combo points back. Use Knight's Blade. Once again, start building up again. Use our Eviscerate. Start building up one more time. Use Eviscerate. And now we use the Bite, already at five again, reapply the Knight's Blade. You see how perfect that is? I'm just going to keep going. Five points, eviscerate. Five points again. Eviscerate. Now the knight's blade is getting low. We're going to reapply it. And once again, we're going to just keep building with that backstab. And use eviscerate. You'll note that, Gor uh, that Gormal's bite does have a long cooldown. So we can't use it a whole lot. But that's mostly because... Um, it's such a strong ability. Right there, I actually reapplied the Night Blade just because it was getting low. We don't want it to drop, if at all possible. And that's pretty much as uh, easy as it is to do lots of damage out of stealth. So you're not in stealth, try to get behind the target. Now, do note that you don't have to be behind the target for this to work. However, for maximum damage and the most disruption possible... You want to be behind the target because it does a lot more damage and my head itches so i'm gonna go ahead and take care of that <laughs> but if we head back into the game now we're going to talk about what do we do whenever we stealth what what do we do after a stealth 
So we're going to be stealth most of the time because, well, we're a rogue and we don't want to be seen. So what do we do whenever we attack out of stealth? The first thing I want to point out if you look at my hotbar is when I'm in stealth, my hotbar is exactly the same as it is when I'm not stealth, except for two things. So first off, you'll note when I come out of stealth that backstab changes. Backstab changes to shadow strike. Now you'll note that I still have backstab. I just changed it on the hotbar because they fill the same role except shadow strike is better. Excuse me. Shadow strike strikes the target dealing almost 300,000 physical damage while stealth is active. Uh, you also teleport to the target dealing 25% additional damage and instead of one combo point, shadow strike gives us two combo points. So it's better than backstab all the way around. So that is why I do not have backstab present and instead I have shadow strike. The other skill that you'll note that changes if you look over where my mouse is, is vanish. And the only reason I don't have vanish on the uh, stealth bar is because we're already stealth, so we do not need to vanish into the darkness and go re-stealth. So, normally I save talents for the second part of the um, beginner's guide, but I'm actually going to talk about one talent in particular first because it's kind of vital to our burst. So if we head back into the game, you'll note this talent right here, specifically just the level 30 talent, the uh, Sutterfuge. Your abilities requiring stealth can still be used three seconds after stealth. Also increases the duration of Shadow Dance by one second. So the reason I brought up that is because since we can use abilities out of stealth, we can use things like Shadow Strike a couple times after breaking stealth, which is good because that means more combo points, which means uh, quicker Shadow Blade, which means quicker Eviscerates, and that is really freaking good, and I needed to show you, because if I didn't tell you about it, and I started attacking it, you might wonder why exactly I was able to use it out of stealth. So, the only difference between our previous um, rotation and our new rotation is simply everything is going to be faster thanks to Shadow Strike. So I'm going to start from over here, and then I'm going to attack the same training dummy that I was attacking earlier. The reason I'm doing this is so you can see me actually teleport to the target with Shadow Strike. So I'm going to use Shadow Strike as fast as I can, get five combo points, use Knight's Blade, and then Eviscerate while Knight's Blade is active. Just as simple as it has been, except now we're going to be opening with the other ability. So here we go. Shadow Strike, Shadow Strike, Knight's Blade, Shadow Strike, Backstab, 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 Eviscerate, Backstab, 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 Eviscerate, Gorehall, Backstab, Eviscerate, Gorehall, I said Gorehall, it's Gormaw, I don't know if you noticed that, but my brain, it like went like this, it was like, Good, 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 uh, and I was like, what's the name of the artifact? And then I was like, Gore, Gore, Gore Hall. It's Gore's, Gore, Gore Maw's Bite. I, <laughs> it's Gore Maw's Bite, not Gore Hall. All right. So now that you've seen uh, pretty much everything I need to show you, actually, you have it. Let's talk about one more thing. I need to slow down one more thing here. We are going to talk about Cloak of Shadows and Vanish. So if you're ever in combat, as I've already said previously, Shadow Strike is better than Backstab. So we want to be um, using our stealth as much as possible um, to, do get, to make sure we're using Shadow Strike instead of our Backstab because it's better, more combo points, it's just great. So. What do we do if we're surrounded by enemies, we're kind of stuck in combat? Well, what we want to do is we want to use Cloak of Shadows and Vanish. So let's go ahead and read what those abilities do. Let's talk about Vanish first. Allows you to vanish from sight, entering stealth while in combat. See? So for the first three seconds after vanishing, damage and harmful effects received will not break stealth, also breaks movement impairing effects. It's fan-freaking-tastic. So we're in combat. It puts us back in stealth. Exactly what we want. Because then we can go back to using Shadow Strike. Building combo points faster. Dealing more damage. 
However, what if we have a dot on us? So basically, what if we go stealth and let's say that our, our Affliction Warlock friends that I taught last week has put a bunch of dots on us. So we use Vanish, but then we get hit by the dots and we're pulled back out. That can be a problem, right? Well, that's what the Ability Cloak of Shadows is going to do for us. It provides a moment of magic immunity, instantly removing all harmful spell effects. This cloak lingers, causing you to resist harmful spells for 5 seconds. So not only does it improve our defenses, but it removes all damage over time effects on us, so we can vanish safely. If you're new, and since this is the beginner's guide, I highly recommend, no matter the situation, Cloak of Shadows, then Vanish. If you're feeling a bit more antsy and you think that you can handle it, just double check that you have dots before using Cloak of Shadows. You can save it for a later vanish, or if you're about to die, it can be a great last defense to keep you up while your healer tops you off. Um, that's pretty much it for the first part. We're going to go ahead and we're going to go on break. I'm going to queue up for a battleground and we're going to use just the basic abilities to use damage to disrupt people to put our team in a better position to win the fight. We are going to be using just our damage to get people to be distracted by us, to not be doing what they should be doing, and then when we come back after the battleground, we are going to be using stuns to make sure we stun everyone possible while also doing tons of damage. We'll be back right after this break. 